God has fulfilled his promise in providing a son for Abraham and Sarah. Already, Ishmael has been born to Hagar and Abraham. So now it becomes a problem to Sarah that this son of the bondwoman is living in their home and he asked Abraham to send her away. This displeased Abraham. However, God said to him, whatever Sarah wants to do, please do it. And so they sent Ishmael away with a bottle of water and to find some needs. But let's find out what happened later from Genesis chapter 21, verse 14. So Abraham rose early in the morning and took bread and a skin of water and putting it on her shoulder, he gave it to the boy, to Hagar, and sent her away. Then she departed and wandered in the wilderness of Beersheba. And the water in the skin was used up, and she placed the boy under one of the shrubs. Then she went and sat down across from him at a distance of about a bow shot, for she said to herself, Let me not see the death of my boy. So she sat opposite to him, lifted up her voice and wept. And God heard the voice of the lad. Then the angel of God called to Hagar out of heaven and said, What ails you, Hagar? Fear not, for God has heard the voice of the lad where he is. Arise, lift up the lad and hold him with your hand, for I will make of him a great nation. Then God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. And she went and filled the skin with water and gave the lad a drink. So God was with the lad and he grew and dwelt in the wilderness and became an archer. He dwelt in the wilderness of Paran and his mother took a wife for him from the land of Egypt. And here we are sitting beside a well. Maybe a well like this is the one that Hagar found and drew water that her son might be able to live and give him a drink again. And now here is Ari Bar David to tell us more about this incident in the life of Abraham and Sarah when they sent Hagar and Ishmael away from the home and Hagar thought she, he was going to die. But God showed her, heard his cry, and found a well similar to this and got water and gave him a drink and the lad was labeled to live and God said, I will make of Ishmael a great nation, and God is going to multiply his seed. So we are in chapter 21, and let us remember that it starts in Beersheba. This is the city that Abraham started from virgin ground. This is the place where Abraham pitched his tent, where Abraham dug a well, built an altar, and called it on the name of the Lord. And what a nice celebration around. Sarah just got her little baby. They named him Itzhak. The word Itzhak in Hebrew is the laugher. Why? Not because he laughed, but you remember Abraham laughed and Sarah laughed when they have heard that they are going to have a little baby of their own. And look, when she was celebrating her, uh, her child, what happened? She saw Hagar, her mistress, laughing. Now, in Hebrew, there is very strong connection between the name Itzhak, which is to laugh, between what Hagar, in Hebrew, what Hagar did, she was metzacheket, the same name the same word. She was like laughing on the child that is called laugh. Another word, you have a very strong feeling here in all this situation that it was like a joke, all the situation. And Sarah felt it. A woman in my age is going to have a baby and now she's laughing on me. I cannot continue with this anymore. Abram, Take this mistress Agar, I don't need her anymore. Let her go. Now, let us remember again that Hagar was Egyptian. So the natural place that she will go was to Egypt. But this time, she's not only pregnant, she has a child which is 13 years old. 
and his name is Ishmael. God met her already by his angel 13 years ago. And now when she, I mean, Abram tells her to go away, she's going to her home, to her parents, to her family, which means Egypt. And actually she takes the road that is just behind me and forward me because I'm standing now on the road that connected Be'er Sheva to Kadesh and from Kadesh all the way the road of Shur to Egypt. Now, when I look around me, it looks so beautiful, this oasis. But you know what? When we were driving 10 minutes ago or even five minutes ago in the desert, look again on the desert that we passed. Look around at the picture. Can you have, or can you notice about any green leaf around you? Almost nothing. And this is so amazing. Unless you arrive like 200 yards, 300 yards around me, you don't know that this place exists even. And that's what happened to Hagar. She was walking and walking. She found a bush. She was hiding behind the bush, ready to die. But she didn't want to hear the cry of the boy. And then when she was in this situation, the angel met her and he told her, I've heard the cry of, the, of your child. Take him with you because I'm going to build from him a great nation. And then in verse 19, God opened her eyes and she saw a well of water. She went there and filled the water and gave her son. We are here near a well of water. It is full, it's full. I'm going now to the well. It is one of two wells on this place. This well is called now Aaron's well. And the water that was coming from the well was filling this trough. Many goats, sheep could come here, there on the third side and were fed with water. So imagine something like this was on the way and something like this was so close to where she was, but she didn't see him. God opened her eyes and then she suddenly, she saw the water and she came to the water. And then she took the water from the well, from inside here and gave it to her son. What a wonderful thing. Let me again remind you the word in verse 19. The Lord opened her eyes and then she saw the well. It reminds us another verse in Luke 24, when the two disciples were walking with Jesus, they have heard him and they were so disturbed of all the situation that was around them. But then when Jesus relaxed, were sitting down and they relaxed, what happened? You remember, he was sitting down and he took the bread and when he was holding the bread, they saw the two holes. And what is written there, exactly the same word. Their eyes were opened and they recognized that this is the Lord that was with them. That's what happened with Hagar now. God opened her eyes. I mean, the well was there. The holes were there. The problem was that the eyes, because of burden, because of sorrow, because of bitterness, because of non-faith, were closed. How important for us that we will let the Lord open our eyes. And if they're open, we see that not only the Lord is standing among us, but living water are coming out of the well. And they're enough to feed and to feed and to feed us. Let us remember, we have to pray, Lord, open 
my eyes that I will see how glorious you are.